Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Give to God the good praise. Hallelujah. He's our great provider. Amen. Amen. We welcome you to Dove Church today. To all of you that are looking in on whatever media outreach that you find us, and we're glad to receive you, glad to receive your comments, glad to receive your comments. We thank you for those that are seeding into us and that you give and partner with us. We thank God for you and we bless you. We bless you for sharing generously with us. Continue to pray for this ministry and this outreach and God is doing it and, and your comments say that you're, you're hearing, you're listening and you're being changed and that's what our goal is, to change the world with the life-changing message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. And right now, Dove is going to show you how much they appreciate you and thank God for you. Come on, let's put our hands together. <laughs> Amen. For you that are in-house, we are sorry for the, for the computer glitch today that you can't put the, the uh, words up in. But we're going to give out the scripture. There's one scripture area that pastors are going to work from today, and that's line upon line. And then I'll give you a few side things. You could just jot those down, but but it'll be okay. Amen. That's why I tell you, sometimes we just need to have a hard Bible with us and look it up ourselves. Amen. Because technology can fail, but the Word of God does it. Amen. Amen. You ready for the Word? You ready for the Word? Amen. Everybody with your Bible or wherever your Bible is, on your phone, iPad, iPhone, whatever device. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We reverence you and we honor you and we, we thank you, God, that the entrance of your word not only brings life, but it brings light. And so, God, by way of the Holy Spirit, move in this room. Help us to think your thoughts. Bring those things back to our remembrance that are good meat for your people. Transform us through your word today. And we'll rebuke everything on on, on unhindering assignment to stop it from operating. And we declare we have ears to hear, hearts to receive. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. So now, Lord, let the word of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, and they all said, Amen. I'm just going to reach over here and get my my partner. I told you last week, all great men of God have a cane. Amen. (laughs) That's just in case I, I, I start tilting. Somebody just... Just point down to the help me. Say, Pastor, grab your help. Say, we're not going to be in pride. Sometimes you just need to acknowledge, I need help. Turn to somebody and tell them that I need help. <laughs> and don't tell nobody you need a lot of help. Just tell them, amen. Amen. Today I want to talk about from the subject Loving God in trials. It's easy to love God when nothing's going wrong. Everything's good. Got a little money. Bills paid. Just had a great meal. Amen. Make no error, Christians should experience that a lot, what I just said. 
But I want to make this statement. Loving God in trials is the quickest and the surest way to overcome them. Loving God in trials is the surest way to overcome them. First of all, God knows you. And when all else fails, you can relax and rest in the fact that God knows you. I was listening to TBN and and the Krauses were were interviewing uh, Bishop Jakes and they asked him what has been the one thing that has kept him all of these years and he said the one thing that have kept him through the highs and the lows and the disappointments and the great burst and the and the abundance is that he knew that God knew him and when all else fails you can rest in the fact that God knows you amen he knows your heart He sees what other people don't see about you. And sometimes try as hard as you you might to show them you, they never really see that. But God knows you. Amen? He knows what he called you to be. Your choices may have moved you away from the call, but trust me, that call is there. It's there. In loving God through trouble, you literally cast yourself onto the strongest force in the universe. What do you cast it at? At love. You may experience God because God is love. God is love. Strongest force. The strongest force is God himself. God is love. Well, let's move into the scripture. James, the first chapter, verses 12 through 18. Everybody needs to find that. It won't come over here until you need to read along. And then pastor's going to go verse by verse and talk about it because in it, we find out how to love God in trials. James 1, 12 through 18. Does your Bible open up with blessing? It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Everybody say endures. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. He's promised to those who what? Love him. Let no one, when he is tempted, say this. And that's what the parenthesis mean, or the, or the, the end quote. I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Oh, oh that's a good verse. Because some things we think God is doing, God has nothing to do with. But each one is tempted When he is drawn away by his own, everybody say own, Own. desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, that means that baby grows up. Brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. James comes back and says, don't be deceived, brethren. Here's the truth. 
Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of, of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That's a good word right there. It tells you what God is not, what God is, what God doesn't do, but what God gives you. Let's go back and unpack it. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, everybody say approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has provided or promised to those who loved him. Whenever you hear that blessed, it carries you back to the Beatitudes or the blessedness of, of, of Matthew 5, 1 through, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the pure in heart. But the Bible says, blessed are you, James adds another blessed to the ones that Jesus said in Matthew, blessed are you when you endure temptation. When you endure, that don't mean submit to it. It means it's harassing you. When you endure it, you're being blessed while you're enduring. Come on, somebody. Ooh. God, it gets tight. That endurance is hard. I'd rather fight than endure. I'd rather stop it. How many of you know endurance is a piece of work? How many of you get wore out enduring? You get wore out enduring. How many of you get wore out enduring? You say it. I get wore out enduring. You know what I'm going to say to that? Yeah, so. Keep on enduring. Having done all the stand, even if you have to have help. Having all to stand. So he makes no way out for you enduring. He say, but you blessed while you were enduring. <laughs> so don't give up because, see, see, you'll stop short of the reward. And there's a reward coming if you, praise you God, if you hold out. Don't give up your hope. Don't give up what you're believing for. Just go and endure until what you believe for walks through the door. You see it. And that's when you say, thank you, God. I was blessed in the endurance. <laughs> oh, you're going to get blessed with this today. I don't care what it is. You're blessed in the endurance. You get tired, go on, stand up. You're blessed in the endurance. Yeah, it gets rough, and you want to give up. But if you give up, you won't get the prize. And you must be conscious to get the prize. Turn to somebody and say, get up. <laughs> Fainting does not win the race. Oh, you thought I came to pity pat today. There, there, you fell out. The Bible goes on to say, when he has been approved, when he has been approved, to be approved means that Endurance approves you. It qualifies you to get the reward. Some people don't get it, but maybe it's because they were never approved during endurance. Woo. Let 
let me go back to that blessed again. It says, blessed is the man. It doesn't say blessed is the man who is never tempted, nor does it say blessed is the man who finds all temptation easy to conquer. Temptation is not easy to conquer. That's not a news flash. You already know that, don't you? But the promise only goes to the one that endures. There is a special gift of blessedness from God to the one who can say no to temptation. It's hard to say no to temptation. Because your flesh is hollering yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in a struggle. No, no, no. Every one of us has been in that kind of struggle. But you've got to win the no, no. Ooh. Because when you say no to the temptation, you say yes to God. And a God, yes, is greater than a temptation, no. You need a God, yes. Let me go to this word where it says approve. Again, here James states the purpose of God in allowing temptation. The purpose is to approve us. That through the testing, we would be revealed as genuine and strong in our faith. Your faith has to be tested. But I'm going to clear this up. We got to say where the test is coming from. Temptations are some of the various trials that is mentioned in James 1 and 2. I didn't give that to you. We started in verse 12. But just for reference, there's a short list. As we persevere through temptation, we are approved and will be rewarded at the work of of God in us is evident through our resistance of temptation. What is the reward? It's a crown of life. Wow. A crown, yeah, crown of life for enduring temptation. So your no to temptation means yes to being crowned. James reminds us that it really is worth it to endure under the temptations we face. Our steadfastness will be rewarded as we demonstrate our love for Jesus by resisting temptation. You tell God, I love you by your resistance. And all of us need to work on that resistance. Resist the urge to be tempted. And it comes in a lot of form. Resist the urge, tempted to lie. Tempted to cover. Tempted to walk in addictions. Because the greater one is on the inside of you, he's already got power over all of it. And he said, if you can just endure it, You'll get a reward. How many of you want the reward? See, I found out there is a reward thing in heaven. There is a reward for, for, for saving souls. There's a crown of life for endurance. There's a crown that goes to pastors. Thank you, Jesus. What is the problem? Why do we resist temptation? Because some resist temptation because of the fear of man. What men can say. But the best motive for resisting temptation is to love God. 
I love God past what men can say. I do right before God past what men can say. Because people will always have a say. They always have an op-ed. They always have an opinion. And it's not always right. And sometimes if you don't know who you are, you always want to fit in. Sometimes you just need to decide, let every man be a liar and God be the truth. I'm going to stand with God. They're not going to like it. You're going to lose some people in the interim. They're not going to go with you. If you stand up for what's right or, or, or you're in the midst of a company, it takes something to say, you know what? I don't believe that way. Or why are you talking about that? Oh. The person that endures temptation It's like the Joseph issue when he was getting harassed by Potiphar's wife. And his key thing was is that I cannot let my my master down, but I cannot let my God down. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? They cannot fall into sin. It would grieve him who loves them so well. And, and whom they love with all their heart, they love God. So I can't let God down. Yes. Yes. And even when you fall, what makes you godly sorrowful is that I let God down. Because I love him. How temptation comes and works. Let's start by getting God off the hook. Let no man, and this is straight out of that scripture, say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot tempt, cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire. Let's not say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Temptation does not come from God. Temptation comes from Satan. But here's the oddity. Because of your choice, God will allow it. But he doesn't send it. Some of the trouble that develops in our lives is because we allowed it. Then that's when we want God to fix it. But we don't want to fix until we get in trouble. Well, that's of the enemy. But each one is tempted. This is, this is how temptation does. God does not entice us to evil. He does not entice us to do evil. He does not tempt us to do evil so that we can turn around and call him God. If we call him God and say that we love him, it's going to be from a clean slate. We just love him because we love him. He didn't use the devil to jump us. Devil get him. Make him love me. No, it doesn't work that way. And then he goes on to show the great cause of sin. And that is that it is an instrument of the devil to stop you and block you. 
But he cannot make us sin without ourselves wanting to. But just for references, I have to go back to, to people that, that got into a situation and, and, and God tempted them, but he didn't tempt them to sin. He didn't make them sin. Many times, God tempts us to test our obedience. It happened with Abraham as it relates to Isaac in Genesis 22 and 1. Isaac was the child of Abraham's old age. But we find something interesting. Although he was the love of Abraham's life, he's the child of my old age, he is the promise, he's the, he's the, he's the avenue which, which the generations will come as stars and as sand. But God wants to know, do you love him? More than anything he could give you. So he said, I want you to get Isaac and sacrifice him. Take him away from his mama. That's where the fight would start. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. I can see Sarah giving him her shopping list. I was an old woman when I had this baby. You mean to tell me you're going to take him where to do what with it? God doesn't care. He wants to test our love. Because you can't love anything I gave you better than you love me. We pray for our house, but we stay home and watch it. You love what you prayed over more than God. Whew. And he'll test that thing. I watch people who park their car sideways in the parking lot. <laughs> cross, cross several parking spaces. At one time I was watching and some unsuspecting person with a, with, with a grocery cart just they didn't care. They got their groceries out and they let their cart loose. <laughs> and it hit that sideways car that you was trying to protect from all the other cars. So you parked across several park spaces. <laughs> See, you probably came out and said, when you saw the car, if you were the owner, the devil is alive. Maybe it's God trying to see how much you love him. Above things that you prayed and asked him for. Because something, you, remember anything that you ask God for at any given time, he could come and request it back from you. It's only on loan. Ooh. Anybody had that experience? Well, God told you to give something away. Oh, but that's my favorite. That's why he wants it. It's your favorite. Then, all the tests that, that Job went through, until he finally said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. He wouldn't curse God. And, 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 the, and the opening discourse about Job was that he was, he was upright in all of his ways. But yet this, this testing came to his life. 
Anytime the enemy has to ask God, can he touch you? You're a bad boy if you have to ask God, the devil. The devil has to ask God, can I touch you? Wow. Here is the truth. Each one tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire and enticed. Drawn away by his own fleshly desire. Drawn away and enticed. It's a fishing metaphor. See, what you do when you fish is that you put bait on a string or at the end of a pole and you throw it into the water. What you're doing is trying to entice the fish to take the bait. And God is saying, when you, you are enticed when you are drawn away by your own lust. That means some bait was thrown out. And you got on the hook. Ooh. Who did it? I did. Because you saw the bait. But what you don't see is what the enemy don't want you to see is the hook. You see the bait, but you don't see the hook. And I, I'm sure for every fish, the worm tastes good until you feel the sharpness in your mouth. Oh. Munch, munch. Oh. And then after a while, you, get, you start getting pulled against your own will. Anybody fish? You just, this is the process. You wait just as good until the bait, you feel a tug. I looked at Rose because I know she used to like to fish. I don't know where she fish anymore. Well, she's an east side girl. She know where the river is. She, she. <laughs> Throw the bait in, and when you, you know you got something hooked, when you feel a slight tug, I don't know which, which group from the 80s or 70s sung this song. I guess you got your hooks in me. And you don't, you, don't, you don't get crazy and snatch right away because you don't snatch, you don't want to snatch the bait out. You want to make sure that he got it deep down in his mouth. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, for real. And so after a while, when you feel your line moving, you know he on the line. And that's what the enemy does. And then he starts reeling you against your will and pulling you opposite to the way you want to go because you realize what was good to me has hooked me. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to hook you, lying and sinker. When you are drawn away and enticed by your own desire. Ooh. And so the devil does it because he, 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 he wants to, to steal, kill, and destroy you. And he wants to knock you out. And he wants to stop you from moving. So the progression to death is inevitable. The results always starts by sin. Sin gives birth. After that, death comes. He's not trying to make good with you. He's trying to make bad. That's when you know it's not God. Because God is not trying to kill you. Uh. And that's when, and I'm almost through, we get to verse 17 and 18. Know this, that none of this is the progression of the Lord. Here is what God wants. Know this, that 
Say this with me. Every good gift. Every perfect gift. Comes down. From the Father of lights. Stop right there. Every good gift. Every perfect gift. Comes down from the Father of life. And he says. Ain't no variation in him. No changes. It's a good gift that comes from him. It's a perfect gift that comes to him. And there is not even a shadow of him turning away. How did he get us? First he brought us forth with the word of truth. That's a good gift. A pure word. That's a good gift. That we might be a kind of first fruit. First fruit of what? The word. We're a good gift. We're a perfect gift. You can get past temptation. You're blessed for enduring. Because there is a good gift and a perfect gift that is coming. And ain't no variation in God. He's not going to change his mind. There's a good gift. There's a perfect gift coming. And God's not changing his mind. He's not going to flip out on you. He's not going to send you to hell. He's not going to drag you through anything. But he said, if you can just endure... There is a good gift. There is a perfect gift that's coming down from the Father of lights for you. Turn to somebody and say, you got a good gift coming. Turn to somebody else and say, you got a perfect gift coming. So your obligation today, turn to them and tell them your obligation today is and scream, endure. Get past. You're going to be tempted, but know that it's not from God. Because God cannot tempt any man. He don't tempt you to be right. But when you love him, you'll endure temptation. Blessings to you today. I want some overcomers to give them a good praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It takes something to just go and do right. And all of us have that challenge. If you heard this word today and you were listening to us, We give you an opportunity to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody in this room is going to make the same confession. If you haven't given the Lord your life, you're in our listening audience or in this house. Repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. I believe today, Jesus, that one day you died on the cross. Three days later you were raised from the dead. To the glory of God. And on that confession. And with this faith. We receive you. As our Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving us. Amen. Now come on give God a great praise for those that are there. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you 
and know that the Lord will bless your giving, you can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.